listen, when you're talking about the input from, from, from different people and that just someone can surprise you, I think this is for me is where there's the real value in diversity. Yes. Now, diversity is obviously it's about fairness, mm -hmm. but it's also about the, the fact that people from different backgrounds, um, people with different ideas, people with different experiences, people from different places, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They can all shine a slightly different light on things. Yes. And, and I really like seeing where organizations appreciate that from a commercial point of view and, an, and a strategic point of view in the sense mm -hmm. that they're not just doing a box sticking exercise. They're realizing that diversity is what makes the world go round because it's yes. just all the different ideas from all the different people. And so there's huge power in that. I also think there's huge power in leveraging that diversity within the supply chain as well. Agreed. As an extended part of that kind of overall workforce. Um, obviously, that the same applies on the kind of goods and materials side as well. But I think specifically within services, where organizations are, it's a, it's a more, it's a people orientated scenario, delivery of work scenario. Yeah. Um, it allows that direct input and allows a range of different inputs from different specialist suppliers, suppliers from different backgrounds and, and suppliers of different makeups. Um, what's your view on how organizations could or should be leveraging that versus how they maybe are? So I would actually say this is one of those areas where procurement has both a massive opportunity and a huge problem at the exact same time. Right. So we're trying to, as you just said very well, we're trying to achieve all kinds of diversity. And there's a lot of research that proves that more diverse workforces are better at problem solving. More diverse supply chains are more resilient. Right. There's all kinds of correlations and, and tangible benefits to that. So procurement has a huge opportunity to be on the right side of this and really lead change. And we can do that through looking at company ownership. We can do it by looking at the location of companies. We can do it by looking at boards of directors and the diversity of their workforce. So there's all of those ways we can approach it. I think the problem that we have, and I'm gonna throw myself right on the pile on this because I am definitely your stereotypical procurement thinker. We say, okay, this is what we need to do. So we need metrics, we need frameworks, we need boxes to check, we need certifications, Somewhere in all of that, the spirit of what we're trying to achieve has a way of getting lost. Um, and I'll actually use a, uh, this happens to be a public procurement story, but it's from right here in the Boston area. Um, the state of Massachusetts was contracting for a service and because they rightly wanted to make sure there was diversity in the supply base, they said, okay, if you take on this contract for us, it is a services based contract you know, X percent of it, I don't know, 30% of it has to be either subcontracted or supported from a supply chain capacity by a certified diverse supplier. Great, right? Well, unfortunately, here's how that played out. One of the suppliers who submitted a very competitive bid said, yeah, no, we're not going to do that. And they explained in the proposal why they weren't. And so they lost the bid. And that might seem fair on paper at the highest level. The problem was the reason they said, we're not gonna sub that out and we're not gonna do that is because that supplier was a 100% woman owned business. And because they said, no, look, if you do the business with us, 100% of this contract goes to a certified diverse supplier. But because the system was set up by procurement to say, okay, did they check the box? Did they say yes to question you know, 42 part C? Because the answer to that was no. Nobody dug into the details to read the comment to say, hey guys, you know, did you just happen to notice 100% of the spend would go diversity in this case? To me, that's a cautionary tale that has always stayed with me because we're trying to achieve so much so quickly. And in order to do that at scale, we have to have some of these frameworks. We have to have lists of pre-qualified diversity suppliers. So we have to have targets or reports, but at the end of the day, it's a people problem. And it's a people problem that has to be solved by people in a somewhat inefficient way. I think sometimes if we completely emphasize efficiency over all else, 
we have a way of driving out the messy secret sauce that actually makes things work better. And so it's, it's again, just like the pause before the comment on social or sending that email to your boss. It's the pause saying, okay, we're trying to create this system. Is it accomplishing what we need it to do? So we're gonna try, we're gonna build a report, we're gonna build a dashboard, we're gonna set some targets. You know, let's three months in, six months in, how is this actually playing out? Are we making progress? Are we having the conversations that we need to have internally? I think so much of it is around language and procurement, having the words to have those conversations. And hey, I'll be the first one to admit, again, dealing with people, I love people, we're messy, that's what makes us fantastic. Sometimes talking about these diversity related topics makes us nervous if we don't have a lot of experience doing it. It's not a reason not to have the conversation and it's not a reason not to make progress but it does make it incumbent upon us to get the education we need, to have the relationships with people to say, hey, listen, you know what? Keep me honest here. I'm, I'm trying to do the right thing. Here are our goals. You know, let's maybe define the terminology that's acceptable. Let's define some of these acronyms and make sure everybody knows what they mean. It, to me, and, and maybe it is my, my writing background, I always go back to the power of communications in actually affecting change. And I think sometimes if we, it's almost like if we try to roll things out too far, too fast, we don't get anywhere at all. We would be better off going a little bit slower and having it be a little bit unsteady, but actually making some gains. I think at the end of the day, that's what's going to separate the companies that pay lip service to this notion of diversity from the companies that get in the trenches and do the work and have the conversations and make a meaningful difference in all of these different communities that they're trying to access.